All right, well, we'll get going here. Um, <clears throat> so what we want to talk today about, and this kind of really, if you were in Mark's previous session, this really follows on a little bit of how do you actively participate as an individual into communities. Um, and so quick introduction, um, Aaron Delp, um, slight change in your program. Um, as of Monday, I'm uh, employed by SolidFire as a cloud solutions architect there. Um, but in addition to that, I, I'm an evangelist for a bunch of different communities. Uh, Cisco champions, VMware V experts. I'm, of course, active in the cloud stack community, blog, podcast, Twitter, all of that stuff that we'll be talking about today. So we're going to share some experiences about that. And I asked Ken to kind of co-present here because to kind of show a little bit of you know, community is much more than about this is just cloud stack, right? And, and how do we build communities and kind of cross communities as well? So, Ken? Sure. My name is Ken of Hoy. I am a technology evangelist with Rackspace. As some of you may know, Rackspace is a founder of OpenStack. So, obviously, that's kind of the, the community I'm part of mostly. I'm also a VMware V expert, so I'm very heavily involved in that community and I'm very happy to be a guest uh, of this community this week. Um, and hoping to share some of the things uh, that I've learned being part of both the VMware and the OpenStack community. <clears throat> and so, so with that, yeah. you would do the agenda? Go ahead. Yeah, so Go ahead. we're going to cover a few things. Um, we're going to cover why you want to get involved in, in, a, in the community, especially the cloud stack community, and what are the benefits you get out of it, and kind of give you some kind of uh, pointers and ideas for how to get involved at a very uh, low level and then at a very involved level. So Aaron, you want to? Yeah, absolutely. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Um, let me kind of do the quick summary of why we even came up with this. Um, so let's be completely honest with everyone for a second. The Cloud Stack community, I feel, is very productive, and it's a lot of people, you know, quite frankly, getting shit done, if I can say that. I don't know if I can say that. Um, <laughs> but I just did, right? It's on the recording. Um, but at the end of the day, that voice and amplification isn't necessarily getting out. And, but at the same time, this isn't a lot of people when we talk about open source projects in general, not even necessarily CloudStack, everyone kind of thinks it falls into one, or two, one of two camps. I need to be a developer contributing code, or I need to be a community manager leading and managing a community. And that is not what this is about. This is really about why and how you as an individual can and should get involved without contributing a bit of code or having community manager as your title. And so let's talk real quickly about community benefits. If you decide to do this, what does this actually entail and, and what are the things that could happen? And so Ken, sure. talk about those real quickly and then we'll flip back. And so a large part of why uh, we want people to get involved, whatever um, software community you're part of, is what Mark talked about in his last session, which is we, Cloud Stack, or it's actually um, it's kind of looking from the outside, is not getting the type of growth that I think you all want. And a large part of that, it, of the lack of adoption, is there aren't enough people trumpeting Cloud Stack as a platform. Um, a lot of uh, folks tend to work in their silos, contribute a lot of good code, uh, maybe lead a few communities. But people outside of, outside of that immediate con contributor community doesn't know as much about CloudStack as they should. And that's one of the strengths that OpenStack and VMware has built in their communities is people who are basically citizen evangelists, right? Who, who don't work for VMware, who don't work for an OpenStack company, but very willing to go out there and talk about why this, those technologies are great. And we need, you guys need to, do, I think, need to do the same. Um, the other reason why it's a benefit for the community to be involved is there's a lot of knowledge that each of you have that aren't necessarily always getting across from one person to another. Um, what would really be help beneficial, I think, it's a, in a sense, a, a, a large melding of minds to create a knowledge base that everyone can choose, pick from in order to um, better implement open, uh, cloud stack in, the, in their environment. And the thing is driving direction. The reality is right now, um, and I talked to Aaron about this, 50% of all the code for CloudStack is still contributed by Citrix, uh, which means they have a lot of direction, obviously, in driving that code. 
But for this community to work, every, we need more people involved in driving that direction of what the architecture should look like and what the feature set should look like for a cloud stack. And the way to do that is you have to get involved. You have to be able to talk about what you want to see. You want to be able to blog about what you see. And you want to be able to go to user groups and conferences and say, hey, this is what makes cloud stack great. And here's what we need to do you know, to make it even better. So with that, I'm going to call an audible here and real quickly just some personal benefits, um, I'm going to blow through these because I actually, I, I ended up getting more people in the room that I wanted to get up here than I probably anticipated. <laughs> actually, everyone I asked actually showed up. So I want to just real, talk, real quick talk about one of the biggest things that I see here is this mind meld and everyone kind of collectively getting smarter. This almost like, you know, Borg-like brain of everyone sharing information and everyone really getting smarter together. And a few examples of that is, is personal networks that have really been developed over time through this community. So, so Kirk, got to know Kirk at last summit and actually had him on the podcast. Actually, was it two ago? I think it was two ago. Santa Clara. Yeah, Santa Clara was when we had it. Got to know Todd at Synergy last year. Um, and, you know, Scott and I have worked together for years. And so there's all these people that you get to know each other at these conferences and you get to know each other through social media. And that is where everyone kind of says, hey, I need something, go through back channels, kind of helping each other out, um, no matter who the companies are. That's what we're looking to do here. So get into a, the, this more of how exactly to practically get involved. So um, I kind of made this up. There's a, um, a, a, a lady who helps manage community for actually for Cisco. Her name is Amy Lewis. And we were actually sitting at Citrix Synergy last year at the bar drawing on a napkin. And we kind of made this up of like talking about all the different levels of, OK, how can you get involved? But, and what are the barriers to entry in all of those? And it almost became a pyramid over time of you start at the bottom and you go up. And what you're seeing here is very, very crowded space because it has such a low barrier to entry. And the higher you go up the pyramid is really based off of how much time do you want to put in and how much money do you want to put in above and beyond the day job? And so with that, I'll kind of break all of these down. Um, do you want to cover the first couple, Ken? Sure. So first, so Twitter, how many of you are on some kind of social media, using a social media tool, either Twitter or Google, or Google Plus? Okay, most of you. How many of you are actively tweeting about or using Google Plus to talk about CloudStack? Actually, a few less people. So actually, most of the room aren't doing that. So one of the great things about Twitter or Google Plus is it's actually very, it's free, <laughs> first of all. Anyone can jump on Twitter, right, and set up an account and use the software. And it's minimal, it's actually minimal time commitment, right? There isn't a lot of prep you have to do. Really, all Twitter is is a way to engage people and talk about things that you care about. So if you, if you believe that there's a lot of people in the cloud stack community that you want to engage with, Twitter is a great way to do that. And the, and the great thing about it also is that it kind of spans geographies, right? So I, uh, in, I use Twitter on a very regular basis, and I, and I communicate with people both in the open stack, VMware, and cloud stack communities, people who live in Asia, people who live in Europe, as well as people who live locally in the US. So it's a great way for you to get involved to, to start building that network of people and to be able to talk about open, uh, cloud stack in a way that um, will get people excited about it. We'll see here. So what I did here is this is actually my Twitter client, right? And all of my different search columns. And these are all, all the different communities I'm involved in. And you can see here, like, here's the cloud stack stream right now. So people in the room actively participating. Um, Triangle DevOps, so I'm out of Raleigh, North Carolina. It's a huge DevOps community that, that I participate in. The VMware vExpert community, here's a bunch of, uh, you know, tweet stream from that. Um, of course, my, my new employer, Cisco Champions, the podcast I do. So I have these running all the time of I'm constantly monitoring and filtering on the things I'm interested in. And that's probably one of the biggest things I want to say to everyone is, is find the keywords you like and the communities you want to get involved in and just go do it. Yep. Um, probably just a quick personal story. <laughs> the reason I got my, uh, the way I got my job at Rackspace is actually through Twitter. Because Twitter, someone I was following in Rackspace posted a link saying we're looking for people. 
and I actually then contacted that person, found out who the hiring manager is, and got hired. <laughs> so there are uh, tangible benefits to being in social, on social media uh, with things like Twitter or Google+. I also want to say transferable yeah. assets. Yep. Can you give him the mic real quick? So, so everyone, if you don't know, although probably everyone in the room does, this is Ruve. <laughs> It, 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 one of the things that I tell people, because people ask me all the time, and I, at Citrix I run a, a Jedi training program for social media, and it's a transferable blast. It means once you have that personal brand, you can transfer to other things in other parts of your life, whether that's a new job or um, upper mobility in your current job. And so that's one of the big driving factors, I think, of continued access and, yes. and activity. Absolutely, and I wanted to, and again, at various points I'm going to pick on people. Um, in the back of the room is Tim Mackey. Um, Tim is very active on Twitter, but you would never know it because Tim's Twitter handle isn't Tim Mackey, it is Zen Server Army. So again, there's an example of like, Tim didn't want to necessarily be Tim, I don't think. I don't know, you tell me, right? No, this was, this was really all about being able to promote the technology and have an engagement with the people who were using it, the people who were embracing the technology and 5,000 plus followers later, You've got a little bit of uh, cred out there. Yeah, exactly. And, and Kirk and, and Todd, you know, I basically got to know these guys from basically following those Twitter filters and then their names kept popping up and it was like, and we were like, hey, we need to meet. Like, let's go talk, right? And so these are two examples of never met face to face but knew each other, you know, Twitter knew each other for a long time. Um, <laughs> right. So um, in the interest of time, we're going to kind of blow through some of these. I don't yeah. want so, I think everyone gets it. Kind of last bit of advice, if you're going to go on Twitter and Google+, Plus, it's just keep in mind is a, it is a conversation. So the idea isn't for you to get up on Twitter and just talk about what you think about CloudStack, but to invite people to be in conversation with you, even if they disagree with you. Right? Because in that conversation is where community gets built. Yep. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and last thing with Google Plus, um, so uh, me personally, I'm not super involved in Google Plus, but I will say this rolls into the rest of the things. Anytime you create any kind of content, publish it on Google Plus. If for no other reason than Google kind of fixes the page rankings to yeah. anything you put on Google Plus goes to the top because they, it's, it's like an insider posting publishing right. trick. Especially put everything blog. on Google Plus. Especially blog. blog. Yes. Which leads us into the next one. Okay, so oh, actually, no, sorry, one more. Go ahead. Okay, so um, Mark talked in the last session about the need to have more cloud stack user groups and meetups. So how many of you have, uh, are involved in a, a user, cloud stack related user group or meetup today? How many of you have actually attended one? Okay, almost no one. Okay, so I'm not sure if that's because there isn't one near you, um, but this is a great way of kind of taking what you're doing on social media to the next level where you actually see people face to face uh, in, a, in a more intimate setting. So if you guys are not currently involved in one, I encourage you to try to uh, create one. Uh, get, just get together with some other people in your area who are, who are CloudStack users or even just interested in CloudStack and start just um, having these meetings and, and start publicizing them through vendors, and you start seeing more and people feel come. So a good example is I, um, I'm a co-organizer of the uh, OpenStack Meetup group, user group in New York City. So when I started um, helping with them back in uh, March, April of last year, we were at 350 people, but only 15 people would ever show up for any meeting um, because <laughs> it was very low involvement. Um, today we have no, over 900 people signed up, and our typical meeting are between 50 to 100 people. Um, which is pretty good for New York. Um, and as well, I've also helped start things in Connecticut and Philadelphia. So it's, the key is just, again, uh, and this is where Twitter and Google Plus helps. I actually found a lot of people who wanted to get involved just by tweeting about it, using like a, you know, a hashtag, like OpenStack, or in your case, CloudStack, and people would respond back and say, hey, I live in the area and I want to be involved. Let's try to, let's get a group together and let's talk. So. So in conferences, I'll cover that one real quick. Yep. Honestly, we're here, so we all get it. But um, I would say the biggest thing with those is since it tends to be harder to get to know people when everyone's doing sessions, 
when you have the things in the evenings, you know, the, the, the last night by sponsor, sponsored by Citrix and quick plug, the one tonight uh, sponsored by Solid Fire. So uh, 9 o'clock to 12 o'clock tonight, um, front porch here in Denver. Go by the booth for more details. Shots. Yeah. Shots. <laughs> and so, you know, encourage everyone to, you know, when go make the effort. Yeah, I know it's been a long day and everyone's tired, but that's when you make a lot of these connections and you start to have a lot of good conversations. So definitely not, you know, this one and any conference in general, find those meetups after hours and, and go attend. Can I comment on this too? Go ahead. Sorry. I, you know, one of the I'm looking created, for that. I one want of the that. things I created back in the early days of cloud was a group called Cloud Camp. And over the, over the years, we've had 100,000 uh, attendees of Cloud Camp in more than 300 cities. So the challenge in, in any community is how do you get from zero to 100,000 users? And we managed to do that in, what, nine months, I think? And I would say, looking back at that, a lot of that was dumb luck. You know, we were at the right place at the right time. But looking at that from, you know, nine, or was it? seven years later, we, we now have this ability to leverage a community. So there's this opportunity to co-opt. So what, what I mean by co-op a community is, is there's lots of intersecting communities that are related to ours that we can sort of buddy up with and say, hey, how can we take some of that to, to our mutual benefit to both communities? And whether that's OpenStack, whether that's Cloud Foundry, whether that's something completely, something else. Um, I think that, that that is potentially our biggest opportunity right now, rather than say, let's go try to build something from scratch. Mm -hmm. How can, we, how can we take the best of those other communities and amalgamate that? Agreed. Agreed. And, and so I'm going to go talk about blogs as well and kind of wrap this all together here. Um, oh, sorry. Uh, that's okay. I was like, hey. Um, so again, on the Twitter one, it was kind of follow at CloudStack and follow hashtag CloudStack. On the blog community, there is um, Planet CloudStack. You can actually sign up yourself. There is, you know, again, zero barrier to entry other than you just create a blog and you create a tag that says CloudStack. You put it on here, it will show up in the feed, right? And, and honestly, it needs some people. It needs good content. And so if you have something you're passionate about, um, kind of, you know, actually, I probably got this, I think, from Scott, the rules of, like, go create a blog, right? If you do it more than once, blog about it. You know, yeah, you can pull up Evernote and create a little thing just for you, but go create a public, publicly searchable, publicly accessible brain dump of how to do things, right? If you can't find it in a Google search, document it. And that's, it's as simple as that to go create a blog, right? Um, so, so backstory is Scott and I work together in Raleigh Seven years ago now, um, and, and Scott was, was a pretty prominent VMware blogger at the time, and, and he got me into it, and, and uh, you know, years later now, it's, it, it's gotten to the point where Scott's kind of gotten out of control of... <laughs> not, of not of becoming books. <laughs> yeah, Scott, Scott's moved into the books and all these other things that could lead into it, and I didn't even put that on here. Um, but, but from a blogs and social media standpoint, this is one of the easiest ways of, you know, if I'm not comfortable maybe socially standing up in front of folks or I'm not, you know, not necessarily want to just jump right in, it almost is a way to share, but it isn't necessarily as interactive um, at times. And, and some people, their personalities, that it fits that kind of scenario. Or, um, in Scott's case, super deep technical, I think is, is definitely your strong point. You're way more technical than I am on my blog. Um, <laughs> and if you don't mind, would you mind just saying a word or two about like your blog and like maybe any tips, tricks that, because Ken and I had some, but I'll be honest with you, I kind of brought you here to set you up for this. <laughs> <laughs> I see it was a setup, okay. <clears throat> yeah, I've been blogging since uh, 2006, um, which I know is not as long as some, some people out there have, but I think the thing for me is, you know, there's, there's been this, this um, you know, rise in visibility on blogging. Um, and and you, can, you can get some benefits out of blogging. I mean, you might open up some career opportunities and that kind of stuff, that's great. But I think the real, the real kind of message that Aaron is trying to share here is really it's about community. When I started writing, it was about, it was about just, look, I needed to capture this because I was doing it more than once. And so it was my own personal, you know, knowledge base, right? But it was more about, hey, I just want to help somebody else out in case they have a problem. I searched for hours and hours and hours and couldn't find it. So I found a solution. I'm going to write it up. I'm going to publish it. There you go, right? And I think in the, in the spirit of helping to build up 
uh, the cloud stack community or whatever community you're, or communities you might be participating in. That's really the thing. And, and it doesn't have to be anything like huge. You don't have to go out and, you know, register your own domain name and, you know, all this kind of jazz. I mean, you can just start up something on wordpress.com if you want just to get started to keep the barrier to entry kind of low and make it easy. And there's plenty of tools out there and, I, you know, that kind of jazz. I, I so. Still, my personal blog is still on Google Blogger. Uh, I've never even done WordPress, and it's <laughs> a million and some views later, it's still fine where it is, and I'm wow. okay. <laughs> and and, and Ruve is the, Ruve, if everyone else was here blogging, Ruve is like here. <laughs> Good. And, and I, I had, uh, I guess, ambitions for... I have the approach that if nobody sees my blog, there's no point to doing it. And the, the, most, the, the biggest in way to be encouraged to continue to blog is to essentially have a good audience. So the, there is a, a variety of ways you can do that today. I think it's actually easier now than it was in 2006 because you have the, these mediums, including medium.com as an example, that helps promote the content you write to people who are interested in reading it. So the, the, the challenge you have with WordPress or Blogger is build it and they will come and nobody shows. And you know, so I blog a couple times, never do it again. Then there's things like the LinkedIn Influencer Program, where you, you can actually blog to the people who you already know, and then bootstrap your, your sort of audience in, in that way. And there's a few other sites that are helping in that regard as well, Google Plus being a prime example. So it's actually easier now than it's ever been. Yep. You, don't, you don't have to blog for Forbes to get you know, that level of visibility. There's lots of other ways. Exactly, so, so real quick, because we're, we're running a little behind here, I just want to say quick tips on that again. The, the, the content up there, of if you, if you can't find it, write it down. If you do a Google search, can't find it, go blog about it. Go get started cheap and free. If you use Blogger or Google, you know, another kind of free tool, but Blogger in particular, make sure you post it to Google Plus because again, page ranking, searches, it's like the quick tip and trick of if you want to get in Google, somehow get it involved in the Google Plus Blogger ecosystem. Yes, yeah, Ian. Yeah, so great question. Me personally, but I'll let some of the others respond. Actually, what I do is anytime I, I create something, um, if I just create a blog post, I actually go create a bit.ly link. And then I take that bit.ly link and put it in Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and everywhere other social place I can find. And then actually bit.ly will allow you to track the link and see how popular things are. So it gives me a little bit more feedback of what kind of topics are popular and, and what aren't. And, of course, put it in Google Plus and it'll usually, it figures out it's a blogger link and it will, you know, go appropriately. Now, on WordPress, I would say, again, do that exact same format. If you're WordPress or any of the other formats out there, use the SEO, SEO plugins and also make sure you post either a bit.ly link or a direct link into Google Plus. Cool. Does anybody else have a different way that they want to share? Um, that's fine. We're good. I think that, um Last thing I'll say about that is, is that um, in technical, look, you guys need to do technical marketing. And technical marketing, because we're in, a, in Apache Foundation, isn't something the Apache Foundation is going to do for you. Everyone who's in the community has to do it. And in technical marketing, content is king, right? So we need, you need it to drive as much cloud stack content as humanly possible out there. And no one person can do that. Everyone has to do that. So everyone should be blogging about something they're doing something they're interested in about cloud stack and cloud computing, and get that out into the feed. Yep. And I want to talk about SlideShare real quickly as well. So another one as well that kind of goes hand in hand with blogging is if you create a presentation, upload it to SlideShare, but don't just upload it. Put in keywords, put in show notes. Take a little bit of an extra time to actually do some things that when people search in SlideShare, they will find it. So this is a good example. So this is the, the cloud stack SlideShare channel. And so Joe Brockmeyer did one, um, and this is the most recent one, but you'll notice, again, this is like how to scale, right, in the fact that if I go look at this, this has had 3,384 views of this presentation. Um, I don't know if he has, but I seriously doubt he has presented it to this many people. And then here's the show, no or, or show notes, here's the slide notes. So again, he took a lot of time to document this, and it's something that really drove traffic to Joe's presentation. Um, so again, follow, 
CloudStack SlideShare, if things get posted out there, go search for CloudStack in SlideShare. Um, since we're running a little behind on time, I'm actually going to skip podcast. If you want to do a podcast, come talk to Ruvarai. It's a pain in the butt, but it's not a big, well, you've got people. I don't have people. I got to do it. Um, and then lastly, I want to talk about the video one very quickly. Um, and I'm not going to go back to full screen because I'm going to flip over to something else. Um, video tends to be very time consuming and very equipment heavy. Buying cameras, lights, as, you know, as, as heavy as you want to go. Um, and editing it is a complete pain in the butt. But if you want to take an alternate route and put things in YouTube because Everyone is searching YouTube for everything these days. It's really becoming almost a preferred way to learn. Again, CloudStack has a YouTube channel. And there's Ruv in his hat from the last session, right, as one of the front videos. But all of the sessions from the last CloudStack collab are posted here. I'm pretty sure all of these will get posted here. Um, but in case you want something a little less formal, to give you an example, this is actually my channel. Um, that I've done with another gentleman, Brian Gracely. And this is honestly, we started out as a flip camera in front of a whiteboard and just kind of did out some ideas. And it was the whole idea, taking the blog idea of if you have to talk about it more than once, record it, taking that one step further. So this is like cloud computing and OpenStack and CloudStack and all of these different things. And we th honestly threw them up there and never thought about them. And I want to say it's up to three or 400,000 hits and 3,000 subscribers. And we honestly didn't do that much. <laughs> like, I'm not even sure exactly how and why it got, but again, it goes to the power of YouTube of somebody went out and searched CloudStack. Somebody went out and searched OpenStack. Somebody went out and searched, you know, Cloud Computing Basics, one of the first videos we ever did. Um, cloud Computing Basics, 60,945 60, views. Um, and it's literally just five or six minutes. Brian was bored in his office one day, got a whiteboard and flip camera. It, ways like that, that can, you can quickly generate content that will greatly benefit the community. And I think we're about out of time, right? So I'm just going to flip this summary here. It's real simple. Find something you are passionate about. If it's not there, create it. But find the community you want to participate in and start small. Go like just outside your comfort zone. Because you, you know, if you're just outside your comfort zone, you're learning. But don't go so far out that you kind of crash and burn. <laughs> and if you have any questions about it at any time, yeah. reach out to Ken, reach out to myself, reach out to Scott, reach out to Ruve, reach out to Tim. You know, there's lots of guys in this room that, that we like to actually build and participate in communities. I mean, that's how I got to meet these guys up front as well. And so it helps you advance your career. It helps you gain a better knowledge. And it also kind of gives you that, that pay it forward kind of feeling as well. Yeah. One last thing I'll say is I'm, I'm willing to help anyone because I've been helped quite a bit in everything, in blogging and talk. So here's my offer to everyone in this room. If you want someone to help you with blogging or with speaking, uh, maybe looking at your presentations or reading your blog and giving you ideas on how to write it, um, email me or Twitter, find me on Twitter, and I will help anyone who, who wants help in doing those two things. It is, uh, what? Yeah. <laughs> it's H-U-I underscore Kenneth. So Tim's, I've been, Tim's session this afternoon was, was reviewed. <laughs> by, by me, yeah. So again, I, 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 again, it doesn't have to be open. It's, I don't mind helping people with cloud stack. My main thing is I just want to help anyone who wants to help their communities grow. So. And with that, come drink beer tonight. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, Aaron and Kenneth.